Okay, shalom family. Welcome to New Beginnings. It's a privilege and honour to connect with you at such a time as this. So let's do this. Eternal Father, thank you for everything that you've done, that you are doing and that you're about to do. I hand over these precious people over to you. I come before you without fear, guilt, shame or inferiority. Speak through these lips of clay unto your precious people. If there's anything that's been designed in order to cause any obstruction, any kind of hindrance, we obliterate it and annihilate it, cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. How have you been? You are the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath, and the best is definitely yet to come concerning you. How are you seeing things at the moment? What kind of things have you allowed to come in to your crown space? Is there any kind of pollution there? Is there things that need to be uprooted and dashed away? Is there anything causing blockages in terms of how you're seeing things? Because if so, let them things be gone right now. Let's look at what we need to be looking at, which is your true likeness. How are we going to do that? By going into the word, which is a mirror. The more we look inside this word is the more we see a true image of who we are. There's a scripture that I've been meditating on throughout the week, a couple of them. One is, God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, which is so encouraging because that makes you kind of like, keep your neck out like, you know what, there's things lined up for you and it's our job to collect those things. And the more we collect those things and then sow that seed back into good ground, then harvest it back, we're going to continue to reproduce, reproduce. But there's something that we need to catch right there. In order for us to know how to operate in the kingdom of God and get good results, we need the right keys, instruction, direction. And the only way we can do that is by going inside the scriptures. And one scripture which, which stands out is this one. It's found in Joshua 1 verse 8. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And it reads, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will deal wisely and have good success. Now that is so packed, right? This book of the law. So this Holy Bible, when we go into it, making sure that we don't depart from it, keeping it around us at all times. So it's going in our ear gates, in our eye gates, so that we can speak it back out. That's how things need to be as much as possible. The more we do that, the more we meditate on it day and night. And then the do part, so there's the action part, because faith without works is dead. So once we see it, we do it then we will start to see the manifestation of that seed that we are getting in the ground so that this seed can then take root, form and then once it's done that, it can spring forth speedily of its kind. Right? So this is kingdom principles, seed, time and harvest and being born again spiritually into the economy of the kingdom of God being born again onto the family of God, where Jesus Christ is Lord, the head, and we are subjects inside of the body of Christ that make up the body, us as individuals coming together on one accord, as family, as heirs unto God, as sons spiritually, you've got male and female, you've got male man and female man, okay? And when we're born into the kingdom of God, we become spiritual sons, heirs unto salvation, citizens, ambassadors of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ representing the kingdom of heaven. So with that, it means that we're a citizen with certain rights inside of a country and heaven is a very real place. The same way how this Babylonian system is a very real place that we're born in. Many of us are given a national insurance number. We're told what to think. We go through all these institutions, this programming, layers upon layers of it. Nursery, infantry, primary, secondary move on to university, we're then told that if we don't study certain things and have certain credentials, then we're not going to be recognised in society, so to speak. And 
there's great things inside that. However, in terms of the final authority and the name above all names, and in terms of a kingdom which cannot crumble, an everlasting kingdom that is governed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, in terms of that system that we're dealing with right now, that we should be working right now, that's the one. Regardless of where we're coming from, who said what, what grades we've got, what shortcomings we've had, and that's on every capacity. This is all about seeking the kingdom first, the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added onto us. And that's found in Matthew 6, verse 33. So, God, for, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's all documented here. And there's plenty of evidence around you. There's plenty of information that can show us the reality of Jesus, the Father putting himself in an earthly suit and dwelling among, among us all. That's Jesus. He is a spirit, put himself in a body, flesh, became flesh and dwelt among us all. We cannot connect back to the Father unless we go through his son to connect back to the Father when we're dealing with the things of the kingdom of God and his system, his mandate. So for those that are born again, awesome. For those that are not, the moment you believe from your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Simple as that. It's not based upon any kind of like works that we do, merits and all this kind of stuff, how good we think we are. Our righteousness is but filthy rags. It's about what Jesus has already done. And by the shedding of his blood, that's paid the price for us. From then, now and forevermore. So all thanks be unto God. The author and the finisher of our faith. We have that favour upon us in order to move around, operate without fear, guilt, shame or inferiority. See, if you've, if you've been walking this walk and you've thought to yourself, you know what? Oh, being inside Christ, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely pathetic, man. It's like, I'm born again. I was told a bunch of things and now, look, I can't see anything working for me. I, it's all inside this book here in terms of how we're supposed to carry ourselves. If I'd have grabbed this earlier on my walk, I would have had less, less ups and downs, but it's process. Everyone's on the path going through whatever, but I'm so thankful that I'm in the land of the living right here and now, knowing this stuff, right? So I'm coming with my experience and what I know and what the word is saying. And this word is my final authority in terms of the direction and where I should go and how I should go about it. So becoming born again is essential. That's, in, that's the first part. Salvation, born again, and then it's seeking the kingdom of God first and his righteousness so that all of these things can be added onto us. A beautiful, a beautiful thing is this, the more we regurgitate this word, the more we read it, is the more we can see how things really are. Because we look with our eyes, but we see with our mind. So for us to reposition our mind back to its original standpoint, so when you see the word re, like rewind, when you rewind something, it's going back to the beginning, to the starting off, back to its original position. The more we regurgitate this word, the more we meditate on this word, and a lot of the times when we say words or you hear words, what you see is pictures. And based upon your conditioning will determine what pictures pop up in your mind. Based upon your experiences, based upon things which have been told, which, have, which people have told you pertaining to certain things will determine how you see things, right? Your perspective. So the more we renew our mind by reading this word is the more we're going to see things from a Christ perspective. And that's how we're going to see how the kingdom works, how to operate inside the kingdom and where we move inside of this kingdom and use our gifts. In terms of seed, time and harvest, which is a principle in the kingdom of God, in order for us to grow things inside of the kingdom of God. For example, if you're dealing with things like finances, the more we read this word, what will happen is our minds will open up to the point where we will identify places that's feeding us 
So from when we are getting fed spiritually from certain places, from certain brooks, certain people, certain things, that's classed as good ground. So if you look at a farmer, a farmer with a seed sows in good ground and there's all different types of ground which is also explained inside the, the scripture as well which I touch base on at some other point. But because there's all these different types of ground, knowing what kind of ground to sow on is so important. And the sower sows the word. So the same way how we're sowing this word into ground in our hearts, depending on the condition of our ground, our hearts will determine what kind of harvest we get from this word. So if we're meditating on this word day and night, we're getting loads of seed in. And this ground's becoming more fertile in order for that seed to germinate. Then God makes it grow. The Holy Spirit will get to work. Because once you're born again, you have the comforter with you, leading you into all truth. Very important. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, living Word. The more we get this Word inside us, is the more this Word will illuminate through us. So that's how we brighten our light, raise our vibration, our energy. That's how we shine. The earth is waiting for the manifestation of its suns, right? So with that in mind, meditate on the word day and night so that thou may do according to all that is written therein. And then you shall make your way prosperous. Look at that part. Making our way prosperous. Okay. So we've got a part to play. The word is there. We've got to take action because faith without works is dead. So we've got to read this word, read it, and then we've got to act on it. So in order for us to see, activate this word that we've got inside us, we have to walk, take action, do things, do things, act on it, speak a certain way. When you look at royalty, that's what we are, born inside of a royal family where Jesus is the Lord of that family. When we walk as royalty, speak like royalty, notice there's no hesitation in the language when royalty speaks because royalty knows what they're made of, who they are. They know the privileges, their rights. They know the constitution they live by. So there's something, there's an air of grace and an air of confidence, an air of knowing. There's not no doubting involved when a queen or a king decrees something or declares something. It's a done thing based upon the knowledge that they are riding on, the backup of that knowledge, the position, the power of that knowledge, power. So we have to model that same language that we pick up from the word of God. If the king has said it about us, we are made in our father's image and likeness, that's it, it's a done thing, it's settled. If other people around us have anything else to say, about that, take it to the king. I'm not coming on my accord, on my own accord. I'm representing the king of kings and the lord of lords. And this is the constitution that I live by as an ambassador on earth as it is in heaven. I'm just here basically to introduce the kingdom of God at such a time as this. And as a representative, I've got to go by the direction of what the word says. So that's the kind of position that we must take in order to walk in authority and power and to get kingdom results. The kingdom of God is within us. So that's where things have been of recent in terms of um, the, what I've been meditating on. Joshua 1 verse 8. If you're not born again, do it now. Doesn't matter where you are, what you've been through, what people have said, what experiences you've had. This is the moment. This is the time. You're in the now. Everything else is a mirage. Everything else, it's... You are in the now. Everything is now. This is the chance that you have in order 
for you to come on over and partake and set yourself up and escape the fire of things, the damnation and the hell of things, which is very real. So, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, then you'll be saved. That's the first part. After that, connect with people that have a relationship with Jesus. Connect with people that believe that Jesus died and rose again for you. Connect with people that will preach this gospel in regards to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christ and Jesus crucified, and people that are kingdom minded. I'm not saying run and join a church, become a member of this, join this religion, be yourself, and one step at a time, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, but in all that I get in, get understanding. Otherwise, what will happen is you have all of this seal. You can be puffed up like I was some years ago. It was like, yeah, yeah, had a miraculous experience, wonderful experience, born again. It was all amazing. It was like, whoa, this a massive dream country. This is beautiful. But what I didn't continue to do in the early stages was meditate on this word, get to understand the reality of things for myself, develop a relationship for myself. I was, to a degree, it's good because you have to learn from people to get direction. But we have a, a, a duty and a responsibility and that's to study, to, to show ourselves approved so we know for ourselves. Because if someone's standing up with a nice collar on, saying things eloquently, coming across a certain way, and they just seem like the real deal. If we don't know the voice of God for ourselves, then we could be led by a strange voice that's carrying us to a very strange place and it happens at all times so for us to be led by the spirit because those that are led by the spirit they are sons of god yeah female male spiritual sons of god being led by the spirit is key the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one at work the holy spirit but God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit all working together. The Holy Spirit being led by the Spirit. How are we led by the Spirit? By going into these scriptures, getting the word inside us, allowing the word to do its perfect work. And then what will happen is the Lord will speak to us through his word and we'll get direction. And then as we pray on a daily basis, you know, Father, you know what? Thank you so much as an example for everything concerning this, concerning that. I need some direction in um, what steps to take, how to go about it. And then we stay in that place for some time, you know, go inside of the scriptures. And then when we hear that, that voice and we know, we recognize that voice, like, yes, Lord, yeah, thank you. And then we move from there. We will make these we will take certain steps. We will end up in certain situations because it's all part of the journey and part of the process. And a lot of things are set up. Rather than say challenge, it's victory for us. But until we get into a place where we see that there's certain places and things that come that appear to be giants in the land, but it's promotion. Once we adopt that mindset, the experience becomes completely different. A good story to read is um, a story, David and Goliath. Great, great documentation they found in the Holy Bible. And David, a man after God's own heart, he was overlooked based upon his stature, age, and society's idea of what success looks like and who's going to be an ideal candidate for a job. But God, God's ways and man's, God's ways are foolish unto man. <laughs> like, the way that God works, 
the way that the way that man works and the ways that God works. And I'm like, wow. And a lot of the times things are set up so that you can't say I'm taking the glory. Only God can say he's taking the glory. In fact, I word that differently. We can't say that we're taking the glory. But we can only acknowledge that it's all about God and his glory. That's the one. That's the one. When we're in a position where it's like, you know what, Lord? Mm -mm. Only you. Here is me with my righteousness that are just filthy rags. And then here's you with your mercy and your grace. In a situation like that, when all hope, hope was gone. And now look, you just showed up like this. You're just a wonderful God. You're an amazing God. When I couldn't see where there's no way. And you split the seas open. And smothered my enemies. Only you God. Only you alone. You've given me the power to get wealth. It's only through your power that I am making a way. Waymaker. You are the miracle worker through us. Lest any man should boast. What is it that you have in your hand? Have you been writing it off? Thinking that it's not enough? It's got to be enough because that's what you have. What we have is enough because we have it. In order for our capacity to be broadened, in order for expansion, we've got to take our faith to another dimension, to a next level. I'm loving this so much. The fact that I can go back to this message and listen to it, man, because this is for all of us. This is for all of us. This is the beautiful thing about when we come together on one accord and break bread. This is fellowship. Fellowship. Do not forsake the assembling. It's important for us to come together. If people try to discourage you into going to church and connecting with the brothers and the sisters, don't fall for the bait. Because the devil is like a roaring lion seeking to see who he may devour. Who can I single out and have a field day with and get my claws in and then spit out at the end? Yeah. It's important for us to stick together. Prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer is key. Prayer, prayer, prayer. 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 So, I think I'll park there. It's been a privilege and an honour breaking bread with you at such a time as this. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Saints, be encouraged. I'm gone. God bless. Bye.